Raksha led her pack with steadiness and strength. She taught the young wolves how to look out for each other. sister listened closely to Raksha. She felt proud to be a wolf. Suddenly, the wolf saw a strange two-legged creature burst through the tree straight into the middle of the pack. Then they saw something else. Shere Khan. The tiger and the wolves were old enemies. The wolf pack tightened around the trembling stranger and faced Shere Khan. The tiger was bigger and stronger than the fiercest wolf. But as long as the pact worked together, the tiger was no match for them. Raksha stepped forward. I believe you've lost your way, Shere Khan. This is wolf territory. The tiger growled. The human cub is mine. Give her to me. Human cub? No human comes to this part of the jungle. But I saw her. She must be here roared Shere Khan in frustration. The wolf stood shoulder to shoulder. Our strength is what we share, the power of the pack. Shere Khan knew he was beaten, for now. You can't hide the human cub forever, he muttered. Just wait, I'll be back. Mama, why is Shere Khan so mean, asked little sister. Because he has no pack, said Raksha. When you don't have anyone to care for or anyone to care for you, it makes you reckless and dangerous. Tell us, human cub, began Raksha, how... My name is Mowgli. Very well, Raksha smiled. Tell us, Mowgli, how did you come to be in the jungle all alone? I was playing at the edge of the village, and suddenly... I heard a hungry purr, and I felt the tickle of whiskers on my neck, and I smelled the most horrible, rotten breath, and I turned and I saw a great big cat with black and orange fur, and I ran, and I ran, and ran, and ran, and ran, and ran, and ran, and ran right into you. The young wolves were fascinated by the human cub. Her skin is smooth and shiny, her claws are wide and flat. 
Her tail, wait, she doesn't even have one. She's not like any cub I've ever seen. With long, strong legs, she leaps from rock to log. She's not like any cub I've ever seen. She's more like a funny little frog. But what to do with her? The wolves could not agree. young wolves continued to argue. Baloo, the bear, poked his snout in. Baloo had a belly full of berries and a head full of good ideas. Baloo inspected Mowgli. This human cub is different, all right, but that's a good thing, said Baloo. These hands of hers could make her a useful addition to the pack. And besides, said little sister, a wolf is brave and wise and kind. We have to protect Mowgli from Shere Khan. That's right, said Raksha. Today, Mowgli needs us. One day, perhaps, we will need Mowgli. The wolves heard a rustling in the branches overhead. Bagheera, she was a wise old panther and a friend of the pack. A human cub. It's been a long time since I've seen one of those, she said. A faraway look came into Bagheera's eyes. Oh. 
except when she's bored or frightened. Yes, beware of the human who is frightened. I was trained and shaped in the city of men, and nothing was ever the same again. And I was trained and shaped in the city of men, and nothing was ever the same Good thing Mowgli isn't frightened of us, little sister broke the mood. The cubs began to tumble and tussle, as all young creatures do. That's enough, cubs, said Raksha. Baloo, let's have our lesson. If you want to run with the best kind of pack, an Akasha speck is the very best pack. There are laws to heed. There are laws to heed. Wash yourself well and take care of your coat. Whatever in your case is not quite a coat. Anyway, I'll proceed. When the sun is high, drink plenty of water, but don't be a bore and drink all the water, just as much as you need. Bagheera gave a low growl, interrupting Baloo's song. Huddle up, wolves, she whispered urgently. The wolves heard the warning in her voice and moved quickly. Shere Khan had hoped to take the wolves by surprise, but thanks to Bagheera's quick thinking, he was too late. He slunk away, growling under his breath. The human cub is mine. Woe to all who harbor her. How come Shere Khan never bothered the people in my village, wondered Mowgli. Bagheera explained. He's afraid of the red flower at the village gate. Hmm, thought Mowgli. Raksha could see that Mowgli and the other cubs were getting sleepy. It had been an eventful day. Afternoon breeze. The 
Suddenly, Mowgli sat up thinking about what Bagheera had said. The Red Flower. If she could get the Red Flower, she could protect her friends from Shere Khan. Mowgli tiptoed away from the sleeping pack. The wolves began to stir. Something didn't feel right. Where's Mowgli, whimpered little sister. The wolves drifted apart, looking for their friend. Suddenly, Shere Khan was among the wolves. Before they could react... He grabbed Little Sister. Let her go, said Mowgli, bounding into their mist. She carried a flaming torch, and her eyes blazed with its reflection. Startled, the tiger released Little Sister. Shere Khan, this is my pack. They came to my rescue when I was in need. If you don't stop bothering them, I will make the red flower bloom where you sleep. In the heat of the fire, some of the wolves shuddered. What would Mowgli do? Mowgli lifted the fire high and addressed the tiger again. Well, Shere Khan? Shere Khan sat down and lowered his great head. Forgive me, human cub. I will never bother your friends again. Satisfied, Mowgli plunged the red flower into the river. Shere Khan was mean because he doesn't have a pack of his own, said little sister. Maybe we can be his pack. Our strength is what we share. The power of the pack. Shiny black clothes or spots or stripes. Oh. 